Welcome back to yet another live AMA session with Newton School. I know a lot of people here uh, often come to us and ask us in these live sessions in the live chat as to what if I am not from the software development background or what if I don't know anything about coding. Well, uh, here today we are going to talk to someone uh, who also is from a different background. He studied electronics and communication and had minimum knowledge about coding before he joined Newton School. So let's invite Kanish to this call and talk to him about his journey. Yeah. Hi, Gopi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kanish. Our viewers are watching and they'll be asking you questions uh, on the live chat. Uh, I would request our viewers to also ask us any questions about uh, Newton School or coding or how Kanishk's journey has been. Uh, so Kanishk, my first question for you is, uh, like you have said that you are from an electronics and communication background and you decided to you know, get into the software development or web development coding space. Uh, how did that happen? So uh, basically, uh, this is around my final year during my placement time. So I sat for my placement and I had decent knowledge about electronics and communications. But uh, there were not many companies which were looking for it. Even the companies which came for electronics engineers, they also wanted coding. And I saw a lot of companies which had profile of full stack developer and all those things. So, I mean, I didn't give much thought to it, but I definitely thought that coding is important. So that's when I realized that no matter if I am not from computer science branch, but I still should know some decent amount of coding because it will be vital in the future. Yeah. Awesome. So when did you decide to join Newton School after making that decision? So uh, basically after uh, my college placements, I did get placed in a company. It was my core electronics company. So uh, the package was, I wasn't all that satisfied. And also the company had a three year bond and the calling date for the company was also a lot delayed. So first I decided to use that spare time to study for gate exam. So gate exam takes place around in February for second week. So just two weeks before gate exam, I uh, saw a mail from Newton School and uh, I read about their ISA agreement and whatever they were going to teach. So I thought that I was as such planning on learning coding because after gate exam and before college admissions, there is several months gap. So I had decided that I was going to learn coding at that time. And at the same time, I got a mail from Newton School. So I decided to apply. So after giving the gate exam, uh, there was a coding test for Newton School entrance. So I gave that and then I got selected into Newton School. So uh, then I joined Newton School. So when I joined, basically I was thinking that there is no downside. There is an ISA agreement, but uh, as I just wanted to learn coding and uh, worst case scenario, I walk out with uh, coding knowledge and no placement. And best case scenario, I get a good placement as well. So with that mentality, I got in. But after the first two months, the first month was DSA. And the next month onwards, the full stack part started. So before that, I didn't even knew what HTML, CSS, all those things were. I didn't know JavaScript. So all that was taught from scratch in Newton School. And at the end of these three things, uh, we got uh, projects. We started getting projects. So I used to do those projects uh, till late at night, entire nights as well, because it was that interesting. It was not like there was any deadline. It was just that that was so interesting. I found it so uh, enjoyable that that's when I started to realize that I wanted to go in the development field. Like this was something which I have been looking for, like something which I look forward to working the next day instead of just uh, maybe going through the motion. So when I decided that, then I gave in my 100% the rest of the months in the uh, proper entire course as well. Right. Um, that's quite um, interesting. And it's also, it also sounds very ambitious. Uh, so it looks like you were adamant on learning coding. But um, when you joined Newton School, uh, did it sound, you know, scary at 
uh, initially like were you scared as to how will you suddenly take on things like dsa or how will you suddenly start doing or everything that you don't know so before newton school the last time that i did actually coding practice was during my 11 12th when i had a java subject so i just focused on learning so i had very basic knowledge in coding and that was before the four year gap of engineering so uh, my coding knowledge was pretty low when i joined newton school i just brushed up my skills good enough to get through the entrance so those were pretty easy programming questions so i just uh, got into the newton school so it uh, kind of seemed like too good to be true kind of thing because they are going to teach you so much they are going to give you so much knowledge and they are also going to get you placed in a good company with a good package so it sounded like too good to be true but uh, i decided that there was no harm they are not asking for anything they are only just uh, i only just have to enroll and the first two weeks are trial period as well so i can see uh, how it is going but uh, in the first two weeks of dsa itself uh, the instructor taught us very well the pace was a little bit fast because we had to cover dsa in just a month but still uh, i gave in my 100% i used to code programs on my own uh, i used to sit for hours thinking of on a single program if i got stuck but uh, anyhow i used to get it done so uh, that's how i went into dsa with minimal knowledge awesome um you mentioned your instructors and that brings me to the question as to how what was the role of your mentor uh, during this process um, did you enjoy talking to your mentors were you so, were your doubts solved so basically after uh, every session after every class that was from 9 to 11 11 to 12 was the time for mentor sessions which usually got to 12 30 or even one while we were in the sessions so the a uh, mentor who i had was pratik bhattacharya and he's a microsoft engineer he has been with microsoft for over 6 years so uh, the amount of knowledge he had the way he taught us things it was uh, unbelievable so whatever doubt we had even if we had the smallest doubt he used to teach it us to from like scratch so uh, he used to teach that uh, why this is happening what is happening so the mentor sessions began began like that then after dsa was completed he even took our dsa mock interview so wherein he taught us like uh, what kind of uh, questions are asked and how actually a interview a professional interview for coding looks like when they are asking uh, dsa and uh, towards the end after i completed my major project also uh, we had a session of mock major project so in that my uh, mentor took Uh, over one hour session in which uh, i presented my entire project to him step by step and uh, he uh, gave remarks he taught me how to present your project so that advice was very much helpful to me in all the company interviews because in many interviews they ask about your project and you need to present it in an articulate in a proper way so that was very much helpful to me so uh, that's about the mentor session right uh that's quite an interesting journey and uh, that also gets me to the question of um you already mentioned uh, your projects can you tell us more about the project that you worked on so the major project which i built was kanban board so it is basically a project management application so i tried to include as many features as i could so i the basic thing about kanban board is drag and drop other than that there were multi level authentication it was an entire full stack project so the back end database and the front end part everything server part everything was to be handled by me and other than that i included uh, various features like managerial and employee access and all those things so yeah it became a decent and a, a big project enough to be presented in a company uh, and uh, show it in your interview as well to any good company okay uh, kanish we have a question here from rohan uh, he wants to know what is the ideal time in your career to get into newton school so ideal time 
uh, if i knew about newton school in my final year i think i might have gone for it because uh, i know that in many uh, colleges like in most of the colleges the people are not all that satisfied with placement so that is kind of the right time and many people in newton school were from final year in my batch but other than that uh, any time you get in it is a good time and as soon as you get in they allow i think from final year onwards newton school allows anyone even professionals with experience and uh, freshers everyone is allowed so i just think as early as you can that would be wonderful yeah awesome uh, you previously mentioned in one of your answers about how your mentor guided you through mock interviews um can you tell us more about your mock interviews and how uh, you know how they gave you the confidence or they didn't give you the confidence what what happened with your mock interviews so basically before newton school i had never really given um, in any interview related to coding or uh, like in so much detail about coding so uh, it was kind of a important point that i need to know how these interviews go what kind of questions are asked and when you give the mock interviews then you come to realize that what to do and how to prepare for the further interviews how to better yourself if you just keep on preparing without giving any mock interviews then uh, maybe you will reach a saturation point where you think you know something but there will be a curve ball in interview so i tried to squeeze in as many mock interviews as i could i gave many dsa interviews so uh, and other than that full stack interviews react node js and i even gave a, just a hr interview as well during the uh, very last days uh, so like it uh, so many mock interviews and i gave and each mock interview has a feedback so it has a feedback form which lists all the questions how you answered them and what the interviewer wants you to improve and these interviewers themselves are very much skilled i mean most of the interviewers uh, i talked to all of them were from big companies like uh, amazon microsoft swiggy zomato you name it so the mock interviews this level of mock interviews you won't get anywhere and the chance to give them the interview and then clear the mock interview that gives you the confidence that if someone in front of me is from microsoft and he thought that i was good enough to clear this interview then maybe i can do it so each and every mock interview gives you that confidence as well as it gives you something to reflect on what to prepare for so mock interviews were definitely a very big plus point awesome uh, we we have a lot of questions coming in kanish and one of the question that um, bapu so sabant is asking uh, is did you have any work experience before joining newton school no i had absolutely no work experience and even more so uh, in a few interviewer interviews i was even asked that i mean it doesn't matter in most companies like no one even asks that why are you from electronics and why are you going into development but some interviewers were even curious that how that happened so uh, i didn't even have a experience plus i was not even from the same field and still i got to final rounds of many companies so it really doesn't matter i think as long as you have the skills and the projects to show it. awesome um so we have a few questions about your placement as well i'll take the question towards your play uh i am sorry uh, audio is not coming can you uh, uh yeah sorry uh, it is still not audible okay uh, yeah yeah now now it is audible okay so my next question is towards your placements as to uh, you said that you know you felt a little confident after your mock interviews how was your placement Uh, like and how was the process of your placement so basically for uh, my company in which i was placed vivo data the uh, this company had the fastest placement among all so there were a few companies for which uh, i had to wait for even a month like every one one and a half week i had interviews but for this particular company interviews was very fast 
so the thing is like uh, it was like 29th of september and i got a mail at night that you have a interview tomorrow with you data at 11 am so i replied okay i'll be present and i gave the interview so it was a one hour interview from 11 to 12 and that was technical interview so the company uh, does not have the same tech stack as taught in newton school so the questions were mainly focused on things like css and javascript because those are like uh, everywhere but they don't use react so much so they only asked a few questions on react and most questions were focused on uh, javascript and css a lot of questions so that's how my first interview went and it completed around 12 o'clock then 1:30 itself i got another mail that uh, you have to give a second round which is around 3 o'clock so that was a techno managerial round so that round covered things like uh, what kind of a team player are you and how do you see yourself working in a company how would you uh, solve a problem if you face any problem in your work how would you tackle that point then apart from that a uh, very one or two very few technical questions were also there but mainly it was focused to see if uh, i am a good cultural fit if i am a good fit for the company so that was the second round and then uh, after that round the next day itself before 12 o'clock only i got a call from hr that you have been placed so that was my entire process of getting placed in vivo data yeah awesome um you know towards the end of uh, our ama sessions i want to uh, i try to know from our students as to what advice you would try to give uh, to someone who's not from the coding background someone who's not studied computer science in their uh, you know college and they do not have a background of coding what what is your advice to them so uh, if you are someone who like me is not from a coding background you have not studied coding in your bachelor's degree you have just a very little knowledge whatever you studied in school or just like that so uh, if you really think that uh, you can do coding you want to get into this line then you can definitely brush up your skills you can uh, get into any course which teaches you uh, all these things so the course itself is not very difficult it is just that you work, have to work hard they give you the assignments they give you the path you have to walk on it so if you are someone who is not satisfied with where they are and you are not from coding branch but you know that uh, you can do coding you will love coding and uh, if you want to get into that line then uh, there is really no obstacle which is going to stop you and uh, it is not impossible to get into and i am a proof of that uh, i have uh, studied the coding from scratch only for the entire web development i didn't know anything about it and even data structures and algorithms also everything was taught in newton school only and i had very basic knowledge so that's uh, what it is for someone who is even not from a computer science background yeah awesome thanks a lot kanishk for joining us today and uh, it's been a delight talking to you i'm sure that you've given a lot of insight to uh, people who are you know aspiring to be coders irrespective of the stream that they are studying in um, thanks a ton okay thank you thank you